primary ciliary dyskinesia, which we call Cartagener syndrome. Now, the primary disorder is going to be a dynean arm that is not going to be working. So let's go through normal first. Remember that your cilia are going to be arranged in a nine doublet, which is you see on the outside of this picture, and two singlet microtubules. Now, if you kind of visualize with me here, in between these doublets, you have these arms known as ATPase, these arms that I'm drawing in. And these arms are what beat the cilia back and forth. And that arm is known as a dynean ATPase. So what ends up happening in primary ciliary dyskinesia is you have a defect in that dynean arm, that ATPase, such that the cilia are emotal and you thus have poor epithelia. What epithelia are going to need cilia? Well, epithelia related to the respiratory system, embryologic epithelia related to cardiac embryology and formation, and your reproductive tract, specifically your fallopian tubes, as well as uh, your vas deferens and your sperm. What's important is that patients who have primary ciliary dyskinesia are going to have bronchiectasis, which is a persistent dilatation of the bronchi. In your questions, they're also going to have recurrent sinusitis. Patients who are going to have recurrent sinusitis and say they have hematuria, remember a differential diagnosis to keep in mind is going to be granulomatosis with polyangitis, formerly known as Wegner's. From a cardiac standpoint, these patients are going to have displaced heart sounds, and that is going to be related to the fact that they could have abnormal cardiac folding, and their left ventricle could be on the right side of the patient. That's known as situs inversus. And then finally, from a reproductive standpoint, these patients can have infertility because your fallopian tube cilia ain't working, as well as your sperm and your uh, vas deferens.